Hey, this is update three to my Unity ML Agents Truffle Pig tutorial. In this one, I'm doing a deep dive into the code for the agent and explaining some of the rewards and a bug fix in there. The first thing that's happening here is we just set a move speed, rotate speed, and nostril width. And the nostril width is the only thing that's a little weird. In this case, we have two nostrils. Ordinarily, they would only be a few centimeters apart, but for precision reasons, I thought that putting them half a meter apart would probably be a little bit more effective. And this is an arbitrary choice. You could try it with a bigger width or a smaller width, but this seemed reasonable to me. And I, I chose it and it, I haven't tested other ones to be completely honest. The, all these are just keeping track of things that are going on. Um, the academy area, rigid body, ray perception. These are all things that are just relevant to this agent and will be used later. And then the number of truffles collected is just so that we can keep track and reward properly. First thing we do is initialize the agent, which is just setting up all of these things, finding the right components, finding the right object that's going to find that academy. Then we do collect observations. This is one of the most interesting parts of the pig agent. And I didn't go into why I did these things before, so I'll go into that now. This first one is a ray cast. And if you look at some of the other samples that Unity's provided, you'll see that they're doing ray casts and they might have five rays pointing out at different angles. And I chose to just do one because I didn't want this pig to be too heavily reliant on sight. And I want because I wanted to experiment with stereo smell instead. And there's no particular reason why smell is better than sight. It was just, I thought this would be cool to do. So I figured I would do it. So that's why what's happening here is it's only looking for stumps and walls. It's not looking for the truffles at all. And it's only looking straight ahead with one ray that points out 20 meters. And it uses this add vector obs, which is short for observation. And it uses this ray perception dot perceive method and you can go in depth on this but really all you need to know is this perceive is do a ray cast get the angle or get the objects that it sees and add that observation to this vector of observations so it's a list of observations that the pig sees in any given frame or I shouldn't say frame, it's more of a step in this case. So then the next thing was I added to that same list of observations, this get nostril stereo. So this is the thing that really is novel about this whole pig experiment that I'm doing here. So I'll get to that in just a sec. The last one is just the local velocity. And I saw that one of the other Unity examples was, use, was doing this keeping track of the velocity in both the X and the Z, just so that the pig could make smarter decisions about, well, if I'm moving really fast, I might want to slow down. Or if I'm moving too slow, I might want to speed up. It's not making any algorithmic decisions. It will just learn over time that higher speeds may correlate with poorer results or super slow speeds that are not moving at all will correlate to really bad results. So back to this get nostril stereo. So that's here in this same file. And it's here. So it calculates the strength of smell in each nostril. And it returns a vector to where X is the left nostril and Y is the right nostril. It doesn't really matter. We could flip them. The AI would, or the deep learning algorithm would learn to just reverse them. But what it does is it uses this get smelly objects method from the area, which all it does is it returns the number of truffles that are in that area. Because what I didn't want to happen was when I originally created this, I used a collider, um, a trigger, so that any truffles that happen to be within a certain range of the pig would end up getting smelled. But if they were too close to the edge of the area, they might actually pick up truffles from the next area over, and I didn't want that to happen. So instead, we just 
get all the truffles that are in the scene, make sure we don't miss any. As I was originally recording this, I realized I had a pretty severe bug, so I've fixed it. At the top, we take the list of smelly objects in the area, and we check, make sure that's not null. If it is, we, we set the, um, the smell to zero, and we return. Otherwise, we initialize uh, the left nostril strength to zero and the right nostril strength to zero. And we figure out where the left nostril position is and right position, Just this is just figuring out a position in front of the pig um, and placing those. Now, we go through each smelly object, each truffle in this case, and for each of them, assuming it's not null, we do this calculation. My original calculation, I had not done this. I was just doing log 10, log base 10, of the distance between the object and the nostril. And I realized what was happening was I was doing the opposite of what I should be doing. So this is log of x. See this, this nice graphing website here. If the distance away from the pig was one, so one meter, it was going to return zero. So I was getting zero smell if it was one meter away. If it was four meters away, I would get a little over 0.5. Looks like maybe point, whatever, it doesn't matter. I was getting, basically it was getting stronger the further away the object was. So at 25 meters out, it was gonna smell even stronger than it would down here. And in fact, anywhere between one meter and zero meters away from the pig or the nostril, it was actually gonna have negative smell. So somehow, I'm, I'm actually quite impressed that the pigs were working at all. And that kind of is a testament to how cool deep learning is. They can learn even with negative smell and still manage to perform pretty well. Now, this is what I came up as a, a better option. What I really wanted was the further away you get, the gradually like not as smelly it would be. And so here it's quite a bit stronger and then it kind of um, falls off in, in a linear way. And this was just from experimentation. I knew I needed to take negative log for sure so that it would f flip it over this x-axis here. And then if I, I just kind of experimented, I wanted to raise it up, so I put it to 0.8 minus 0.5 log x. So this is kind of just an arbitrary thing that just gets me the shape I was looking for. Back in Visual Studio, you'll see I have this left nostril using this exact equation. And so it's calculating that now, and it's working a lot better than it was. And I'm just gonna kick over to uh, something that's actively training right now, and you can see how the pigs are doing. Of course, now they're, gonna, they're not gonna behave for me. Okay, so here you can see he's just, not necessarily doing a whole lot better than before, but at least the calculations are correct. And it looks very intentional as the pig is going through. So back up to where we were, that's the end of the observations that the pig has. Now down to the actions that it takes. So the first thing it does is determines the rotation action. And rotation is this second spot in the array, um, index one. And it does a rotation based on whether the value is one or two. If it's a zero, it does nothing. So remember, this, these are discrete actions. And discrete means you have the option of doing some set number of things. So in this case, it's turn left, turn right, or don't turn. Whereas a continuous set of options would be turn left one, or turn left 0.1, or turn left 0.3, or turn right 0.4. And I didn't want to do that because it seemed like that would just take longer to train. I wasn't really interested in super precise movements of the pig. I thought that just having it learn 
either turn left or turn right in any given step would be a little bit easier to understand and to debug if there were problems. So that's kind of the direction I went with it. Then we just apply the rotation. In this case, it's not using any sort of physics to rotate, so that's why sometimes you'll see that these pegs kind of rotate even when they don't move. Like they might be stuck, but they're still rotating, and that's because when they're trying to move, they actually have to apply a force. But when they're rotating, they're literally just saying, I will be at this angle now. And I'm using this rotate vector times rotate speed. And that's kind of what that does. It, it does regulate the speed a bit so that they can't just do a full 180 in one step, but it's still not a physical rotation. Now the move is a physical move. So it's either going to not move at all if, if, it's a, if this value turns out to be zero. If it's a one, then we're gonna move forward. And if it's a two, we're gonna move backward at a speed of 0.5. And this was really just to discourage it from wanting to move backward. Some of the times I've trained, it still tends to move backward and learns that moving backward works for it, but it seems to prefer going forward just because that is faster for it. And then it applies the movement, and here's where you see that add force. It adds a velocity change using, using forces. So now here it determines the state, and this is where it kind of decides whether it's done or not. I set this kind of arbitrarily just watching it. This get cumulative, get cumulative reward is less than negative five. If it is, then just quit because I found that they weren't really learning a lot beyond that. Their behavior was just too bad and they should just quit and try again. So that's what happens here. And it does this swap ground material coroutine to um, set success to false. So it, it's gonna show red and then it resets the area. So that's, that's pretty straightforward. And it'll get a score of negative five. If that's not the case, that means our score isn't greater than negative five so we check to see if we've collected all the truffles and if so then we're done and we just take whatever reward we have and we mark it as a successful run with the green floor and then we reset the area and in the last case which is any other situation then we're going to add this tiny little reward that will discourage just sitting around and doing nothing because otherwise the pigs can get a reward of zero by taking no action. And that's not really what we want, especially if there are punishments for other things like running into walls. They're not, they're gonna learn to be really careful and never take any risks. So this just kind of helps them move. And also I have this update score anytime I add a reward. That's the scoreboard that's on the, the floor so that we can see what the score is up to at that given moment. This agent reset, which we called up above, actually, I guess we don't call it here, but it's called externally to, to this code automatically. Um, it sets the velocity of the pigs to zero because otherwise they might still be moving from the previous run. And it sets the number of truffles collected to zero. This was the get nostril stereo method that we already went over. Here's what happens when we collide with something. So what it does is it takes this collision and this on collision enter is just a unity provided method that we're overriding. So we have a collision dot game object dot compare tag to truffle. If it's a truffle, we want to collect that truffle and collecting a truffle is just a little method I wrote to separate things out. It increases the count that it is collected then it adds a reward of one and updates the scoreboard. And then it destroys that truffle so that we can't pick it up again. If it's instead a wall, then we add a little negative reward here just so that it kind of discourages it from hitting the walls. I found if I crank this up too high, even 0.1, the pigs didn't really behave properly. They just kind of feared the walls too much and they wouldn't explore. And so, I decided to leave this here instead of trying to tweak it to be perfect because every training run is a little different and there's not a lot of value in trying to just find the perfect 
thing here because sometimes you'll you'll tweak it and tweak it and realize that you're not actually making progress. It's just that the pigs randomly learn slightly different each time.